Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, it's frosty today. It's, uh... oh. That's the trouble with uh, living in the country. On days when it's frosty, you never know if you're gonna end up in a, in a bush. My nurse's daughter rode a car off the other day. Not frost in the frost, but certainly on the wet roads in the mud. And the way I come, which is a sort of a country route, there's a lot of, uh... hang on, safety first, angry. Let's just integrate ourselves with the throng of people on their way down this country road. Here we are. So we're at it. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, so how are you? All right? I'm okay. Just double check the exposure there. So I haven't done a few, uh, I haven't done a few videos for a while and that's because when I did the, um, the GDC videos I didn't want to release those while I was suspended because I didn't want to, you never know, that some when some helpful friend of yours is going to send a link to the GDC or something and say, look, you know, this guy's commenting on how useless you are <laughs> processing his application in real time. So. Anyway, it's all uh, water under the bridge now. I think they did. Uh, they did. Uh, they did it in ten days, which is, you know, I suppose. Compared to some other dentists, let's put it that way. I think I, I did okay. And there were other dentists doing worse at getting on the register than I than I did. So, what can we talk about? Well, I mean, it's a new year, isn't it? I mean, we're still in January. We've got the wages coming up. I've managed to uh, scrape together enough money to pay the rent and pay the uh, rates and the wages and the labs and they're the sort of the major bills aren't they that you need to cover so I'm going to get through another month so another month is uh, all you need to get through every month you just need to get through another month so and seeing as my surgery is managed a month at a time I'm quite pleased in a way because uh, the turnover that my financial year finishes on the first of end of September, I think. I don't remember the first of September or the end of September. I think it might be the. Uh, no, honestly, I don't know. I should know that, shouldn't I? This is it's either the first or the thirtieth of September. Anyway, uh, using the first of September, which is what I was using yesterday, the actual turnover has gone up. It was uh, two hundred and a bit. Uh, in my first year and then in the second year it's gone up to 240 something so that's good and then my profit I'm um, unadjusted profit I mean these figures haven't been up to the accountant yet these are only management accounts but my unadjusted profit has gone up to uh, about 35,000 or something which is nothing you know I mean you know compared to the sort of figures we used to achieve that's that's hopeless. <laughs> uh, but having said that, I mean, I am more, uh, how can I put it, as I get older, I'm less concerned about pairing every penny out of the business. You know, I'm more concerned about just doing things nicely and doing high quality work and using nice materials and having a decent quality of life, you know. I don't want to be one of those dentists, and I've seen them, there, there are too many of them, you know, who work through to the point at which they pick up their NHS pension and then and then um, you know they're, they're grey-haired and wrecked and they retire and then within a year or two they're dead I don't want to be one of those dentists whoa that's bright sunshine corner that is So it's just a case of, you know, if I can pay my mortgage and my rates and uh, my food bill, then I don't care, you know, and as you know, I'm not massively uh, into driving fast cars. <laughs> well, the cars I drive are fast, but they're not exactly uh, top of the range. 
might see me in a Tesla one day. Yeah, so uh, I had another patient uh, send me an email yesterday and he'd sent it 11 o'clock Sunday morning. He came in to see me Friday and uh, it's about the third time I've seen him. It's just a routine checkup, and as you know, at every checkup we disclose the patients. We uh, ch check their brushing, we tell them if they're under brushing, over brushing. I tend to brush a couple of teeth just to show them exactly what I'm after. They then brush a couple of teeth just to, so I can see what their manual dexterity is like. And then um, we send them, we pack them away with a little, little tiny little carrier bag full of with a brush and a mouth mirror and five disclosing tablets and a little leaflet that telling them again what we need to do. And uh, I got this really snotty email saying. Uh, Oh, and also, if they've had any sort of professional cleaning, they also get a, an email, like, pursuant to that cleaning, they get an email saying, you know, you're getting this email because you've had some professional cleaning, that's because you've probably got some gum disease, and uh, this is what gum disease is, and... Anyway, um, he would taken exception to this email follow-up, and said that uh, he didn't realise he'd got this gum disease, what, what was it? Why hadn't he been told that he got it? What could he do about it? What could we do about it? And and finished it off with a totally <laughs> gratuitous and unnecessary comment that this fell far short of what he considered to be a professional a patient, a professional private relationship. And he felt that the, the all in all service is pretty poor. You know, it's a pretty poor service. So. Anyway, I had a look back through his notes, and um, as I say, sure enough, we've seen him two or three times. The first time he came in, we gave him a uh, pictorial quotation, because he had uh, one, one other restorative bit, something or other he needed doing, in addition to... Uh, so I'm sorry about the sound, but with the blower and the wheel bearing and everything, it's, I can't take the other car, it's quieter in the other car. But uh, anyway, we'll have to come to some sort of solution. I'll um, I'll have to get the wheel bearing fixed or something, something drastic. Anyway, so he'd got the, he'd had this quote, and it comes from we put we take we've got an intraoral camera, and we take in intraoral pictures all the time. So um, we put the intraoral pictures in the quote, so it's actually got I've actually got a, his initial quotation right from his first visit says that he's got gum disease and what he needs to do about it and uh, and uh, it's got a picture of his teeth with a stain on and the plaque on all stained up and you know and stain on and and uh, also some uh, calculus and everything so and then uh, he's been to see the hygienist a couple of times and uh, in fact he's had this that, note he's had this like leaflet this email leaflet through before he had it last time he came to see the hygienist he got exactly the same leaflet pretty much the same wording and didn't mention anything at the time so I presume he uh, either read it and didn't think anything of it or uh, it went into his spam or he deleted it or he read it and just deleted it or he saw the headline and deleted it or something I don't know anyway for one reason or another, he's got a right cob on about this email. And I'm annoyed as well, because, I mean, as you know, like we are very big on gum disease. I mean, there are very few dentists that disclose every single patient at every single checkup and give away free, free brushes and disclosing tablets to absolutely everybody at every visit. So um, I wrote back to him and I sort of quite nicely, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, you know, the things upset you. I didn't say I'm sorry for upsetting you. I said, I'm sorry this leaflet's upset you. You know, in this, oh God. A granddaughter, and one day she looked up at the ceiling in my lounge and she saw something on the ceiling. I had some shape in the plaster, I don't know what she saw. Anyway, she's only about two. She screamed like mad and she wouldn't get in the, go in the lounge, right? She just wouldn't go in the lounge. She was frightened of the ceiling. Or something on the ceiling. We never we looked at it and we looked at it, we couldn't work out what it was and we asked her and she wouldn't go in the room and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, in the end my wife blue tacked a sheet of white paper on the ceiling over the bit that she was pointing to. 
So, so now she goes in and like for the last year or so, <laughs> she's not bothered about it anymore and probably doesn't even remember it. But uh, this, every time I look up, I see the sheet of white paper on the ceiling. And I think, what was it? What, 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 was, what the, was it? But that make her panic so much. And I got the same feeling with this bloke, you know? I mean, I'm sorry, I'm sorry my granddaughter got upset. But I'm not, I'm not sorry for upsetting her. <laughs> because it wasn't me that upset her, you know? I don't know what she got upset at. She was just uh, some, some, something, you know? <laughs> that upset her. And I think it's a shame, and I'm sorry it happened, but it's, uh, we did our best to fix it, and, uh, and this bloke's read something into this email that he thinks is, you know, or, or I mean, it brings up two more important points as well, which is one, you've got to say to people right on the first visit, what's wrong? Everything that is wrong has got to be brought up at the first visit, because this is a classic example of, and you know, we, we were able to, you know, I mean, he has to allege negligence. If he's gonna get anywhere with us, with any sort of complaint, he has to allege that not merely that we've done something wrong or we've done it badly, but that we were actually negligent in doing it, in, in, in the way we did it, or the fact that we did it, or the fact that we didn't do it was, was, it was quite obvious to the, you know, the average practitioner that what we were doing was wrong. And we, it was quite obvious to us that what we were doing was wrong. And therefore we were negligent. Well, you know, and that's quite a high bar. I don't think the patients understand what, 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 what a high bar they've got. So, when, when a patient comes in, on the first visit, you have to really just think, what, in an ideal world, what would I do with this mouth? Because if you don't do that, then it leaves it open to them to say, look, uh, you know, you never mentioned this. When I came in here, you never mentioned it, there are go by implication, I never had this. I never had this. It's all very well you telling me I had gum disease by the second time I saw you, but you didn't say I had it on the first time I saw you. Ergo, I must have caught it at some point between the first and second visit, right? So fortunately with this guy, not, you know, not only did we tell him that he got it, and make a record that we told him that we've got it. We've got a, print, a quotation which we've kept a copy of, which says that he's got it, and it's got the photos and everything. So there's no possibility for him to argue that we gave it to him, or that we missed it, or that he caught it far more recently than I'm saying. Because, you know, you can't say gold gum disease, yeah, is a long-term condition. But, you know, I know we only told you you've got it six months ago, but you've had it for 20 years. But we didn't feel like mentioning it the first time you came in. You can't do that. So then you've got, you know, your other, your other thing, which is obviously keeping all your records. And we were able to produce all these records. I didn't reproduce the notes, because I, I made a lot of notes about his brushing and stuff like that. But, that you know, you can always if he might if he requests his records or his new dentist requests his records, then we can. I, I'm quite happy to release those. That's not a problem. But I did send him all the stuff, you know, and I said to him, look, on such and such a date, you came in and had a scan and polish, and we and we already sent you this leaflet once. So I don't know what you're so upset about. But I can't, you know, my my apology was was for the fact that he was upset, not for the fact that I upset him. And I think that's quite important. I think you need to understand the difference you know and then it mustn't stop you expressing regret that things haven't gone as well as you'd liked uh, even though you know you're not by implication you're not saying that that's any fault of yours and in fact in this case I think it's, it's some fault of his and also you know the other thing is you mustn't forget that there may be some sort of ulterior motive here you know if you're on the parent teachers association and uh, you don't want to be on the Parent Teachers Association, and you're, you know, because it's a pain and you have to drag yourself out once a week and you get roped into volunteering for all sorts of stuff at the weekends and you don't particularly like the, the bloke who's in charge. And, and then what happens is some tiny, tiny thing comes up at a meeting 
and you say, oh, I don't agree with that, and they say, oh, well, we're going to overrule you, and you say, well, in that case, if you're going to overrule me, I'm going to resign. This is a point of principle. I'm up with this. I will not put blah, blah, blah. I'm off. And everyone goes, well, that's a bit weird. <laughs> that tiny little, that tiny little thing. And he's, he's treating it like a, you know, a massive a resignation issue. And of course it's not, is it? It's not a resignation issue. The, but it's, the resignation is something you want to do anyway. And so what you do is you just use this, this tiny thing as the excuse. You don't, you don't want to stand up and say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm resigning because uh, I'm fed up with the charity work and I don't like, you know, I like to, I don't want to miss Coronation Street on a Thursday. You know, you, you make up a nobler cause, don't you? In fact, if you're, you know, particularly disingenuous, what you do is you try and heap a large amount of blame on the other side and say it's your fault, I've done this, I, I, I didn't want to do this, whereas in fact secretly you did, but you say no I didn't want to do this you know but if it wasn't for your actions I wouldn't be resigning and there's an element of that in this case you know I don't know whether the guy's, the guy's on a preventive scheme and it may be that he's not having enough work done, occasionally you get a patient who's on a preventive scheme and they will say to you no I don't know why I'm paying you Two, three hundred quid a year you know I never have anything done all I have is a checkup and scan and polish and you don't do any fillings you don't do any extractions you know it's a bit like um, it's a bit like someone ringing up the AA and saying look you know I don't know why I'm in the AA how many times a year are you turning away my you're just not turning away my car enough for me to justify being a member <laughs> so I'm um, okay Fair enough. It's a bit of a junction of death there. Oh, so yeah, so you do, I mean, for those patients, the answer is you have to say to them, okay, you're, you know, this, this sort of uh, offload the risk, pay a fixed premium to offload the risk of you needing any treatment is obviously doesn't work for you. That is not your the way you're wired up, you know? About a third of people are wired up to see that as a good idea. And about two thirds of people will not offload the risk. They'll adopt their, their risk takers, you know, they'll adopt their own risk. They'll adopt the risk of their teeth uh, going wrong. They'll adopt the risk of their, um, of their boilers blowing up and they'll adopt the risk of their cars breaking down or, or their water pipes freezing and, and needing repairing. And I'm, I'm in that group. I'm in the risk adopters. And perhaps they're wealthier people who've got the money to get themselves out of the shit. They end up in the shit and they, they spray the old money hose on the problem and the shit goes away. But um, But anyway, don't uh, don't be afraid to say that you're sorry that things have gone wrong, even if you can't, for the life of you, think how you contributed in any way to them going wrong. Talking of which, someone is being towed away by their. Oh, there's a there's a moral there. This is someone actually got an AA van. <laughs> We've just pulled out around him. So anyway, so let's get to the end of the story then. So what happened with this guy? Well, well, I mean, I think he would have been all right if he hadn't just failed. Just if he'd resisted the temptation at the last minute to put in this little dig about how he thinks we're a pretty poor, it's a pretty poor show and we're a pretty poor dentist. I think he would have been all right. We would have just said to him like, this is just a routine thing. That, and in fact, he's, he's I like him as a guy, he's quite a personable guy, he's he's not an idiot, I mean he is an idiot, I mean, but he's not, he's not scum, you know what I mean, he's, he's quite a wealthy guy, he's got his own limited company, and he's, he, he, you know, up till now we've got on fine, but then what happens is the slightest thing goes wrong and he bangs off an email saying that he thinks I'm, I'm a pretty shoddy dentist. And you, I mean, can you work with people like that? I can't, you know, I can't. As soon as someone says that they don't think I'm a very good dentist, then I won't be doing dentistry for them anymore. Uh, and 
I think that's in their interest as well as my interest, you know, because that's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Because then anything I do for them in future, I'm going to be thinking, well, you, you know, you're, you've got the potential to complain. However well I do this, you've got the potential to complain because your judgment mechanism is impaired. You're not, you're not in a position to consider what I'm doing and know whether it's good or bad. You I, I mean, you can, I mean, you can say that any of you could say I am actually not in a position to look uh, dispassionately at my own work and decide whether it's good or bad. And it may be that I am doing a rubbish job and thinking that I'm doing a brilliant job. But I don't, you know. I mean, obviously, you have to look at life through your own lens. And at the moment, I'm pretty sure I am correct in saying that disclosing people and taking photos of their teeth, giving them pictorial quotes. And, and lots and lots of advice about gum disease is, is probably the right way of doing it. And, um, and, and either forgetting or ignoring or disregarding all of that advice and, and still alleging that the dentist is a poor dentist who doesn't diagnose gum disease and does, hasn't discussed it with me or um, suggested what I could do or he could do to resolve the situation. I think that is the distorted view right I think he's got the distorted view so and so as soon as you realize that he's got this distorted view then you're on hiding to nothing aren't you because you can do the best will in the world and uh, the best treatment and, you're, and you'll still be up before the GDC with a guy like this because he's his lens is distorted his lens has got a flaw he's looking he's looking through a crack lens he's not seeing the truth you know he's not seeing reality just pop through here and see if I can't get around this corner a bit quicker than this van. Yeah. So, you know, so I wrote him, and again, the, the other trick is that you, you know, don't be nasty with these people. You can write them quite a nice letter. I wrote him a letter saying that I'm sorry that. Um, uh, that uh, it didn't work out. Uh, I, no, I, I'm sorry that he was upset, you know, and distressed. <coughs> but it was a routine email, and it goes out to everybody who's had a scan and polish. And that uh, I've just, uh, you know, in trying to work out why he was so upset, I've had a look through his notes, and I have noted that, you know, we've sent him a picture quote, and he's been to see the hygienist twice, and that uh, we have. Uh, you know, I quoted a few bits back to him that we've sent in emails saying that he has got gum disease. And then also saying that, you know, I'm sorry to hear that he's, uh, you know, that I, I, I felt that, you know, over the last two years his oral health had improved and I thought that things were going pretty well. Um, and that, uh, you know, that if he'd like to, if he'd care to elaborate on on his statement that he, you know, why he feels that we didn't tell him anything, why in the face of it we did tell him all this stuff. If he knows that we sent him all this stuff, if, does he acknowledge that we sent him all this stuff, or has he forgotten it all? I think it's more likely he's just forgotten it all and it'll come as a surprise to him when I add it all up, which is the beauty of keeping it all together. But I think that he'll, you know, he'll like, oh my God, you know, I, uh, so perhaps they did say something then, yeah which is, is difficult because then, you know, it's is something that is capable of remediation. We could have sorted this out, but, but, this last, but for this last bit about him saying I'm a pretty shoddy dentist, which actually basically means that we are not gonna be, we're not gonna be doing business any further. So what I've done is I've said that, um, that's all right. I've said that, uh, you know, that, that should he uh, find a dentist who in his opinion is a better dentist, uh, or that they should find a dentist, basically. I mean, I, what I do is I, I sort of word, I just say, I forget exactly how I word it, it's something along the lines of, um, however, I'm sorry to, you know, hear that uh, you're dissatisfied with our service, and uh, I will be pleased to forward your notes to um, any dentist who, in your opinion, provides a better service, you know. And uh, then you put a stop on his uh, account and some no, no further appointments, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. He's, he's free to go elsewhere and you're free to um, have a stress-free day once you've got the stress out of your system. Because it has stressed... I mean, I've been stressed for... on and off for two days over this. And it's funny, you know... <laughs> 
the most stressful uh, patients are the ones where you've you've done well. Do you know where you've done good work? They're they're the ones that you end up. If they complain, you end up getting more stressed about them than the ones where you've done badly. You shouldn't have any ones that you've done badly. Anyway, I'm working out. I've got to run. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.